Today, I want to talk to you about how to adorn God's truth. And I'm going to read to you Titus chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, where we read this. Exhort bond servants to be obedient to their own masters, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back, not pilfering, but showing all good fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. Titus was to teach bond servants about their specific duties as Christians. Because slaves were welcome to be full members of the church, Christians shocked the larger culture in the ancient world by mixing slaves and masters in the social setting of the church service. This meant that a slave might go to church, and he might even be an elder over his own master. Nevertheless, Christian slaves were to be obedient to their own masters. Paul didn't say that bond servants should be obedient to every free man, only to their own masters. This means that Paul recognized that bond servants had obligations, but only to their own masters. At the same time, as in every arena of human submission, our obedience and submission are always limited by our higher responsibility to obey God. As Peter said in Acts chapter 5, verse 29, we ought to obey God rather than men whenever there's a conflict between the two. Another way Christian servants were supposed to honor God was by not pilfering. Now, this type of offense was so common in the ancient world that sometimes the words servant and thief were used interchangeably. It was assumed that servants would steal from their masters in these small ways. Simply, Titus must direct servants to be good workers in all ways, to be well-pleasing in all things. And by their hard work and humble submission, they would adorn the doctrine of God our Savior. Now, that's a wonderful thought, that believers, by their godly living, can adorn God's truth. That is, in some way, decorate it, make it beautiful. According to one commentator, to adorn literally means to take precious jewels and arrange them as to show their true beauty. Now, in one sense, the gospel doesn't need adornment. At the same time, we can show the beauty of the gospel by the way that we live. We often think that we need better words to adorn, adorn the gospel. Better words are fine, but what we really need are better lives. You don't need a high position to adorn God's truth. Even the bond servants among the early Christians could display and reveal the beauty of the doctrine of God our Savior. Today, ask God for the wisdom and the strength to adorn His truth.